We're excited to get started on finishing our timber frame battery box. We did a part one to this video series where we talked about some of the joinery and the design of this small timber frame. And it's a really great video. If you get a chance, watch it. Um, what we want to do is continue that process and get this thing finished up and ready for winter. Uh, really quick, the reason we chose a timber frame for this project was because we're actually working on a timber frame uh, for our future home. And so we thought, what a great opportunity to kind of just play with some of the fundamentals of timber framing. And today we're going to be working on some of the roof structure and siding panels. And so it's a chance for us to work with our timber framing square and kind of learn some of the roofing concepts. Part of what makes this roofing project a little complicated is that our battery box is located just adjacent to our cabin. And we need the lid to open fully so that we can access the batteries for maintenance. So understanding the proper tail to put on the rafter was something we had to kind of measure and figure out. We also want to make sure that the siding and everything is nice and tight because uh, we do want to keep these batteries relatively warm during winter and we plan on insulating the structure. So we're having to work on some of the framing on this and unfortunately it's just not timber framing, it's more like stick framing. But it's a good chance for us to work with our framing square and angles. Because we want the roof to button up nice and tight when it's closed, we want to seat the rafters on the top plate. You could technically just set the rafters on the plate, something like that, but it's not a very tight connection. So we decided to cut a seat in each of the rafters to help them to sit more flush and create a much more tight uh, seal right here. But figuring out how to do that, it's not exactly straightforward if you've never used a framing square for that purpose. At first, cutting these rafter seats seemed really intimidating, and we did a little bit of reading. In fact, my dad gave me a really cool book about the steel uh, framing square, and I've done some reading, and it turns out it's really, really simple. In fact, you don't even have to have any really great math skills. So we figured out the pitch of our roof, which happens to be a four and 12 pitch, which is a measurement, and we use those numbers to lay out the rafter seat using the framing square. Uh, we'll not do it to a tutorial on that per se, but we just want to explain that the, the, the framing square is such an amazing tool for laying out things like this. We decided that we wanted to seat the rafters about one inch, so they're sitting one inch deep on the plates. It gives us a nice tight seal in there. And then we used some other math to figure out the distance between the seats. That was not something that was really easy, I'll tell you. It was a little confusing, but we got it sorted out. So now that we have this initial rafter, um, we can actually use this as a template and it'll make cutting the rest of the rafters really easy. Easy, yes, 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 yes. For roofing, we decided to use some of this reclaimed roofing that we picked up last fall. And that plays into the roof dimensions decision because this is three foot wide with the ribbing at nine inches. So we need to make sure that our roof is an increment of nine inches to make sure that we've got an ending rib on the side of the roof. If we were doing a more typical timber frame rafter, we might do something down here called a bird's mouth where we might leave this somewhat uh, triangular in shape and then cut a notch for the rafter to sit in. This project is small enough, I don't know that it's really worth uh, or justified practicing that joinery. So we're gonna focus more on getting the project done and maybe we'll leave those more complicated joints to another time. To help create a nice tight seal between the roof and the frame, we're gonna add this small connector in here and uh, just a small support. This will give the roof a, a nice uh, clean surface to seal against. So um, probably not, again, a typical timber framing piece, but uh, for this project, it'll work. We still haven't had a chance to add any additional bracing to the frame, so it's still very much subject to racking. And to keep it simple, uh, we decided to add some knee braces just in the corners here. And we wanna mount those flush. Uh, we're actually going to be placing two inch foam insulation on the inside. So it is going to protrude past the frame just the hair, but we're okay with that. So we're gonna put these uh, knee braces in here. And then uh, we're gonna look into also adding just a couple of girders along the bottom to help the, the frame stay a little bit more stiff and then also give us a place to attach the siding. 
Alyssa got all of the knee braces installed and it really stiffened up the frame. It's amazing how just a few triangles will uh, stiffen a frame up nicely. Uh, we did get all the rafters cut. Once we had that template, it was amazingly easy to get all of these uh, cut quickly and they fit perfectly. Because we want to put a soffit on this frame, uh, we went ahead and attached our fascia board and we actually recessed that down ever so slightly to allow the roof sheeting to pass by. And now what we're doing is setting up the soffit hangers inside using my timber frame square to pretend like I'm creating a box inside the soffit here and that's going to give us the measurement for our soffit hanger. The boxed eave came together nicely. It took us a little bit of time to kind of figure out how to do the soffit hanger and get that all squared up. Um, but as you can see, the roof panel went on nice and flush with our fascia board. And then actually you just happened to have these pieces left over. Worked out really good, Alyssa got those cut. This is gonna sit nice and flush against the post, creating a nice tight seal uh, for the outside. Before I can install the siding, I need to actually reroute our inverter and charge controller cables. We had them set up like this before and I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, we need to get this rerouted and then uh, do some cutting to make sure that we can get them cleanly through the siding. Uh, we did go ahead and cut the siding and got everything squared up there. Um, created a nice tight seal. We decided not to overhang the pallet uh, because the frame is just ever so slightly smaller than the pallet. So we're hoping that now if we were to put siding on, uh, we could actually overhang the siding to kind of create a, a nice tight seal on the bottom. Uh, there was a couple of things that we had to figure out with the boxed eave where the siding would join with the eave. Because this is a lid uh, box, it kind of poses a challenge for that eave mechanism, whereas normally you'd have a fixed roof, not moving like a lid. Uh, that would be a pretty easy connection, but because this is going to be opening and closing, we wanted to make sure that that seal was uh, nice and tidy. Before we hooked the battery cables back up, uh, what Alyssa did was kind of figured out our uh, sheet yield for our two inch foam insulation. We're gonna create basically just a solid wall of foam insulation in here um, and tuck it in the back of the frame. It's not a maximum amount of insulation, but should keep the battery bank nice and warm this winter. So we got the roofing installed, and uh, by the way, the roofing and the insulation were both reclaimed materials that we picked up a year ago. If you haven't seen that reclaimed materials video, check it out. Uh, to make sure that the batteries have good ventilation for those times when we're equalizing, uh, we did put a small mesh in the rear eave uh, just to give some airflow in there. Um, thought that might be a little bit more convenient than drilling holes in the sides. All right, timber frame battery box project is complete. We do have a few last things to do on it, but we'll catch up on those another time. We may or may not put siding on this one. We're not really sure. We'll have to kind of see how the weather affects it. Uh, this probably seems like a little bit blown out for such a small project, but it was a great opportunity for us to learn some of the basics of construction. We're looking forward to building our own timber frame home if everything goes well, and what better way to learn than to practice on projects like this. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about our off-grid homesteading project, or follow us on our journey, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button. Let us know if you enjoyed it or not. We also have a blog, purelivingforlife.com. We put a lot of content and articles over there that we don't put on YouTube. So if you want to read those, take a look there. We also have a Facebook and an Instagram. We'll put links to all that stuff in the description below. We'll see you next time.